Now let's look at some applications in biophysics especially, because, you know, it's fun, it's bio, it's us humans and all. But let's see, the most famous muscle, or the one that people love to show off, is our biceps, the little lump there. Uh, especially guys like to show this off for some reason. But think of it, why can bones move in the first place? Why is there a lump there? What's happening? Truth is, all your bones are like the rods we looked at earlier. Okay, those straight line rods, just all over. Basically, your skeleton is just a bunch of straight sticks. But what makes you able to move are the muscles that are pulling the sticks. So oftentimes, you have like pivots, and then you have muscles pulling up, muscles pulling backwards, things like that. So you see here, this one joint where the muscle pulls the bone. Here's another joint. And all these are what uh, causes a torque on your arms. Okay, so you all... Your bones and muscles are actually working together so that you can move, so that you can do this, so that you can do this. You can do, I don't know, all kinds of things, swing your arm around. It's all because of torque. That's why you you can move. Lah. It's like rotating. Oh, I guess our necks are also rotating. Very complicated kind of torque, but move your muscles around, stretch a bit. Don't sit in front of the computer too long. Exert some torque using your muscles and bones. Okay, let's look at the past year question. First one, forearm torque. Ooh, look at that diagram on the right. A man holds a load stationary in his hand. The combined weight is 20. What is the vertical force needed in the biceps? Ooh, okay. First things to note. The load is held stationary. I repeat, the load is held stationary. Stationary meaning that your net torque is zero. Okay, so let me repeat that. Your net torque is zero, which also means clockwise torque equals to anti-clockwise torque, like what we talked about in the uh, previous video. Okay, so all the clockwise torque balances out with the anti-clockwise torque, so nothing rotates. It's just stationary holding the load there. So how can we calculate this? We need a vertical force. Okay, you see a diagram like this, don't panic. It's the same thing as what we looked at earlier. You have a rod, um, you have uh, the weight of the arm plus the hand. So that's given to us as 20 newtons. Right there, 20 newton. So that's a force that's going to cause the hand to just, you know, drop down because there's a weight. And then there's the big heavy load, the box, causing a, what do you call that, a clockwise torque because of its force of 100 newton. So there's also what the muscle will do, which is the one right here, bicep muscles, gonna contract and pull up the whole bone to support that. And you can represent that with a simple arrow. And then that's what I'm trying to find. What is this force needed? Hmm. Now they didn't exactly tell us what the pivot point is, but remember we can choose and it's usually a good idea to choose the hinge. So where is... So in this case, the elbow is the hinge. So that's where your forearm will rotate about. So okay, let's do that. Let's choose the elbow as the hinge. Now we solve things like normal. Okay, so we're going to shortcut a bit. I'm just going to do clockwise torque equals anti-clockwise torque. So clockwise torque equals anti-clockwise torque. So what's going to push clockwise? First, we have that um, the weight of your entire forearm. So that's 20 Newton. You know what? Let me just make it color coded. Why not? Since I have so many colors available. 20 Newton times... How far is it away? Check and see. 10 cm. Ah, cm. Let's change it to meters. So 0 0.1 meters. Okay, what else? What else? Aha, there's another one, the 100. So 100 Newton from the load, the box that you're trying to carry. And how far is the entire forearm? 32 cm, so 0 0.32. Hmm, that equals to anti-clockwise. We don't know what that is. Great. Okay, so we'll just say F times 
some distance. 4 cm only. Wow, very short. 0 0.04. Okay, so we plug in our calculator to see what we get for F. You can do a hit. Don't need to wait for me if you got it. Okay, so let me just plug it in a bit. 0 0.1, 100, 0 0.32, divided by, whoops, divided by 0 0.04. 850 newtons. 850 newtons. There we go. So this means, the muscle, the poor muscle biceps, have to exert a force of 850 newtons, which is about, wow, if you change that to kg, that's about 85 kg. <laughs> okay. So, 85, 850 newtons by the bicep muscle. So you could say, what, what affects a person's strength? Well, it could be how much that muscle, the bicep muscle can contract, that would be how much force you can exert. Or maybe the person's bicep muscle is attached much further out. Like maybe, you know, if I draw on the picture here. Maybe the bicep muscle is attached a little further here. <laughs> like, you know, apes, if you see monkeys, their arms are actually not quite straight like this. They have like an extra muscle coming out. That make them make, make their hands much stronger. Or you could have shorter arms. So then your distance is much shorter between the, the, the pivot and your pivot and your load. So that that will enable you to exert much stronger torque if you're arm wrestling someone or climbing a tree or things like that. Okay? So whenever you see any kinds of body related anatomy related questions, just remember it's all talks. Simplify it down to a rod like that one over there.